Hello, I'm Hugh from Home Network Solutions, and in this video, I'm going to be setting up Unify Talk with a third party provider in the UK. Unify Talk is brand new, it's literally just out this week. Um, so it's really, really new. It's very exciting. It's been a long time coming to the UK and I'm really excited to be, uh, to be running through it. If you want this service and you are in the UK, you can speak to us and we can set this up for you. You can be anywhere in the UK and we can get the service running for you. So if this is something that interests you, then get in touch, email address below and ask us about this service. We can get it set up for you. Couple of constraints about this service. You cannot have Unify Talk without a Unify console. You must have a console. And by that I mean something like a Dream Machine Pro, Dream Machine Pro SE, which is what I'm using here, um, Dream Router, Dream Wall, any of those consoles. You can't just run this from software like you can Unify Network. You have to actually have a console. So that is a constraint about it before we go any further. Okay, so I'm gonna get into the phones and we'll just talk about the products and the services available and then I'll sort of talk about some of the features. And then finally we'll get into the setup. Um, so if you want to skip to setup, please do, but let's get on with looking at the phones. So we've got the two phones here. We've got the Phone Touch Max, which is the one that I just showed you there. That's the one I've got now. Obviously that comes in white and black. And then we've got the Phone Touch. As far as I can tell, I've not seen the Phone Touch actually, but I'm pretty sure these are just exactly the same. They've just got different size screens and obviously the orientation of the screen is different. But other than that, they're exactly the same. Um, they are not just VoIP phones. They can also access things like Unify Protect, Unify Access. And that's brilliant because it means that you can view cameras literally on the little screen on the, on the phone itself. Also, with Access, you can let people in using the desk phone, which is brilliant because you've just got your VoIP phone there and then you can pick it up to let people into the building, which I think is absolutely amazing. It's got a little camera on it as well. It's brilliant. So I really like the phones. There's also this bit, this uh, converter here that's coming soon. I think that's actually available in the US, but it's coming soon in the UK. And basically what that means is if you've got an old phone, you can just plug it into, uh, into the adapter and then use that as a VoIP phone or as a unified VoIP phone. What you'll notice from this lineup is there's a cordless phone missing. There is no cordless phone at all, um, which is a little bit disappointing really because people do like cordless phones, but you can use third party phones with uh, Unify uh, Talk. So if you want to use, say, like a Yeelink cordless phone or something like that, you can use that with Unify Talk. Obviously, you're not going to have the same features. You're not going to be able to do door entry and things like that. You'll still be able to use it as a phone. Something that I will mention now um, is you cannot use soft phones with Unify Talk. And by that, I mean there is no Unify Talk app. There's no ability to use VoIP phones on your mobile phone. There's no, there's no ability to do that at all. It's not possible. So if you want to use your VoIP phone on your mobile, like when you're out and about and stuff, you, this isn't a service for you. It just doesn't work at the moment. People are crying out for an app for this, and there isn't one yet, so I don't know if there's one in the pipeline, but people are really, really desperate to see that. So hopefully we'll see something soon. You can't even do it if you teleport in. It just doesn't work at all. So that's a little constraint of that. So I'll just explain how the Unify uh, Talk service works. So there's two ways of doing it. So if I click on this phone touch max here. Okay, so obviously we've got the white one here and that like seven inch display, Bluetooth, etc., etc. et, cetera, et cetera. Um, And then if you scroll down the bottom here, you can see the two options. So you've got subscription locked, subscription unlocked. And basically what that means is if you buy a subscription locked phone, you buy the Unify Talk service with it. So they've got their own VoIP service and you can just literally buy the phone. The phone is quite a bit cheaper, so it's 118.80 including VAT. And then if you buy it unlocked, it's 286.80. So what's that? Yeah, quite a bit of difference in price there. Um, 160 quid difference in price. So um, there is a bit of a difference. Obviously Unify want you to use their VoIP service. Personally, and I am biased because we do offer VoIP services. And as I said, if you want this service, you can contact us and we can get you set up. Personally, I would use a third party provider. Now, my reason for that is around customer service. I really like Unify, they're great, but their customer service is not great. And if you've got problems with your VoIP, I think that they're gonna be a little bit slow to respond. Just based on my experience with dealing with Unify or Ubiquiti, is they're a little bit slow to respond. It's all email based, chat based. You can't just call someone up and find out what the issue is and get it resolved. So, when you use a third party provider like ourselves, you can just call, you'll speak to someone, and then they will sort the issue out for you. Um, and it's a little bit more responsive. So, from my point of view, 
it might be worth paying a little bit more for the subscription unlocked phone and just getting that sort of more reliable service or more customer friendly service from a provider. But as I said, I'm a little bit biased, so it's up to you to make your mind. I also don't know anything about how the Unified Talk service works in the UK. I haven't really got anyone to ask because it's so new um, and I've not seen a lot about it yet, but I'm sure we'll find out pretty soon. But that's basically the way it works. You can buy a subscription unlocked or subscription locked. As I said, you absolutely have to have the console. Okay, one other really cool thing I want to talk to you about before we get into setup is the ability to teleport with this phone. And what I mean by that is you can literally take this phone and you can go to your house or outside of an office, so wherever, you, wherever your console isn't, to another location, and you can remotely connect into, um, into the service. And you use that with teleport. And basically what happens is you get sent a little email QR code to your phone and then you use the phone's camera to scan that QR code and it will automatically remotely connect you to, um, to the service, which I think is just brilliant. It's like such a nice, easy feature and it's so simple to set up. Again, I'm not gonna show you that in this video, but I will show you in a later one and it's, it's just a great little feature. So little things like that are so well thought out. One of our um, guys also pointed out that the fact that you've got your phone number up in the top right corner there is also brilliant. It's just really handy because you look at the phone and, and it's just there, which surprisingly isn't a feature that you see on many VoIP phones. So I really like that. You can do all customization of ringtones, wallpapers, all stuff like that. But we'll get into another time. Let's get on with the setup. Okay, so I've logged into the console and I'm up on applications and you can see that Talk is already installed. I just installed that a minute ago. So uh, the version of OS we're using is 3.2.9. When I was setting this up last week, I was having to use early release because the uh, UK wasn't yet available on the current release, but they have now released it on the standard version. So this is the one you should be using. If your um, Dream Machine or your Dream Router, etc. isn't up to date, then you need to make sure it is, otherwise this isn't gonna work. And then the Talk version is 2.2.3. Okay, so we'll get into this, I'll press setup. Um, and the first thing it's gonna ask me to do is what country. So if you don't have the latest version, previously last week when I was using a normal version, it only had Canada and the US. Um, so the early release enabled me to get the United Kingdom. So I can select United Kingdom. I can agree to the terms and then I can start my setup. Okay, now because I've done this before, it's already got a setup here. So you won't get this, but I've already got a setup here. So there's no way of doing this without going to a previous setup, which is pretty annoying um, for this video, but you know, it's just, uh, it's pretty simple this part anyway. So I'm gonna select that, we'll go to next. Okay, now it's found the phone that I've got plugged in, which is the Touch uh, Max, and it's assigning it to me. There's no one else in here to assign it to at the moment. Now, I haven't got, if I'd like, say for example, I selected this one, so I'm in Berkshire, so if I put Berkshire, oh, uh, Maidenhead actually, it'll probably be, let's try that. So if I'm in Maidenhead, that's my area code, but if I said next, because I haven't got a, unit or a Unified Talk subscription, it wants me to sign up to that. That's what that is. Um, I've actually already used the trial, so I'm going to cancel that. And what I need to do here is just go none, internal calls only. If you do select an area code, then it's gonna try and set you up on the Unify VoIP system, but we're trying to do this on third party. So I'm just gonna say none, internal calls only, and then we'll sort that out later. So now I'll go to next. Um, it wants your emergency contact information, and this is basically just so that the emergency services know where to find you in the uh, event of a 999 call. Um, and it will ask you that. I've already input mine, so that's why that's already there. Okay, so now it's setting it all up. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to set up the third party SIP provider. So we go down here to settings. Um, it's gonna again ask me about this subscription and I'm gonna cancel that. And then we're gonna go down to system. And then where it says third party SIP settings and SIP providers, we're gonna add one down here. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is give it a name. So I'm just gonna call it Home Network Solutions Berkshire SIP. And then we need to add some custom fields. Now these custom fields are gonna be uh, the kind of details that come from your VoIP provider. So they might differ slightly depending on who your VoIP provider is, but your VoIP provider should pretty easily be able to provide all the information of the stuff you're asking for. So we need to add those fields and then we add the information to those fields afterwards. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So the first one we're gonna add for me is proxy. You have to press the little add button there. 
then context, then we're going to add password, then we're going to add register, then we're going to add username from user from domain uh, expire seconds nat options ping uh, then we got caller underscore ID underscore in underscore from and that is all I need in here. So once you've added them all, you can just press done down here. And you can see now it's added the field, so I can actually put that information in. So this information is private, so I can't show you all this information, and it's gonna be different depending on who your SIP, uh, your SIP provider is, and uh, you know your account details and stuff like that. Obviously your password and things are gonna be uh, specific to you. So I'll type these in. Once I've done all that, we can carry on. So when you're putting in the phone numbers, you just need to make sure that you put the 44 rather than the zero. And then further down when we add the phone numbers, it's plus 44. So, all right, we'll scroll down. We don't actually need to put in the uh, selected, we don't need to put in our destination countries. We can leave that. We do want it to handle all calls uh, by default. Um, we don't need to uh, do this bit, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna manually import some numbers or a number. So I'll put my number in there. So this is the one where you have to put the plus four four. And then you have, once you've got the number, you just have to press this little plus here next to it and then I'll add it. Okay, and then this bit here is really also really important, the IP address range. You've got to add an IP address in here. This can't be a domain name, it has to be an IP address and that'll be basically where your service is being held. Okay, so now we've got all the information in and we can apply these changes. So we're going down here, press apply. Okay, so once you've done the changes, you then basically need to apply them to the phone or the user of the phone. So if you go up here to assignments, and then you'll see the phone, and it's really, it's quite a weird way of doing this. So that's the phone, but then basically you go to the user on the phone. So we'll click here, or you can go up here to users. So you can either go there, device like that, or you can go up here and press users. So that's basically the way you do it. And then you can click on that to make changes as you would in any other Ubiquiti stuff. It pops up on the side here. And then we need to go to settings, and it's kind of filled the first part of the general bits. There's your phone, so that's already assigned to me. And then I need to go down to number. So this is where you add the service that you've just put in. So if we select that, select the number, and then you can't select the outgoing number straight away for some reason. You have to press apply changes, and then select the outgoing number, then it will be populated, and then you do it again, apply changes. And that is basically that number assigned to that phone. Now on the phone, it's got it. It's got the number in the in the top corner, so that has been assigned. But if I try to make a call now, it won't work. So if I go dial my mobile number, it will say call failed. So you get a big thing saying call failed on it, and it's a bit frustrating because you think, what the hell's wrong with this? And then if you try and call in on that number as well, so I've got my mobile here, and I'll try and call in, and it just says user busy, so it doesn't work. Um, so this was a bit frustrating, it took us a while to figure this out. Um, basically, if you follow any kind of guides from the US or Canada, then you do exactly this and it should work. But because of the type of voice quality we use um, in this country, you have to make a change. And to make that change, you have to do that through SSH on the back end. Now I assume, I'm not 100% sure, but I assume that they will eventually change this for the UK because it's pretty standard in the UK. We use a different system to the US. It's just the way it is. So um, I don't know if they're gonna change this in the future, but at the moment you have to SSH in. So I'll show you how to do that. It's not difficult at all, but it is something you have to do. And after you've done it, you then have to reboot the dream machine, which is a bit of a pain. But I'll do that now and then you can see exactly what's required. Okay, so before we do the SSH, we have to enable SSH. So I've gone back to the OS settings of the console and I'm gonna go down to console settings. By the way, I apologize if you can hear some uh, noise in the background, there's some pretty heavy rain here. 
So in console settings, you scroll down and then you go to advanced SSH and we tick this box here. And then we're gonna to need to give it a password. So let's get rid of this one. And I'm just gonna give us a really simple password, which I will change later. Password one, two, three, exclamation mark. We'll get rid of this as well. Password. Okay, so that is our SSH password, and then we just enable that. And now that basically means that we can SSH into the Dream Machine, which we need to do for the next part. Um, I'm going to be doing the next part on a Windows machine. So I'll share that screen with you now. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to download a bit of software um, to access the Dream Machine via SSH. I'm going to use uh, WinSCP. There are other softwares available, but this one's really good because you can just access the file really easily. So it's a free download. You just literally click on the download now and then you can get it up and running. And then when you open it up, this is what you'll be presented with. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to here, change the file protocol, and then we're going to type in the IP address of the Dream Router. So this might differ for you. Mine is 200.1, um, but it might be different depending on what your IP address is. Support number 22, you can leave that. And then the username is root. And the password is the password we just created. So password 123, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. I'm not going to save that. I'm just going to log in. Add that and then we're in. Okay, so the first thing we can do is click on this bit over here on the side and then that will open up the menu and we're gonna to go to users, then we're gonna to go to share, then we're gonna find the unified talk down here, click on that, go to app. And then this is what we're looking for, this server.js here. So we'll double click on that and that's gonna bring up a whole load of scary looking code. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to change some stuff. So we're going to find and replace. And we're going to change that from uh, PCMU to PCMA. Right. And then we're going to go replace all. So you click on that and you should get six replacements. And then you can press OK. And then up in the corner here you can press save. And that is it, that's all you have to do from an SSH point of view. So we'll come out of that and uh, we'll start the next stage, which is rebooting the Dream Machine. Okay, so uh, now we've done the SSH, we just need to reboot the Dream Machine. So we can just do that in console settings and literally just press restart here. And that's gonna take a few minutes, so I'll join you again once that's done. Okay, so the Dream Machine's now rebooted and we are ready to test it out. So I can see the phone numbers on the top corner of my screen here, and I'm just gonna call the phone initially and then I'll call my mobile out. So we'll just try it on. So uh, get my mobile, put on the number, and then we hear it ringing. So that's the phone ringing now. So that's great news. And now we'll try it the other way. Uh, let's go here and press this one. You can hear it ringing and my phone is ringing. So that is great news, it is all working. Okay, so the SSH bit is really key there. Like without that, the phone just wouldn't work. The call would just failed. As soon as we updated that, rebooted a Dream Machine, it all started working again. So if you're getting frustrated, then that is probably gonna be the key. Thank you very much for watching the video. Please do subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.